this is week seven report out of Lynn's weight loss journey. That's my weight loss journey. I am going to assume you have already listened to episode zero, which is a super important episode to know the context of why we're talking about weight loss in the midst of a body positive movement at the same time. I'm also going to assume that the topic of weight loss journey is an okay topic for you and that if it's not, you'll pause and move along. Oh, we got some fun for us today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the nervous system, my fibromyalgia, what's going on there. Um, If you don't know what fibromyalgia is and you're middle-aged, which means you're a Gen X or or above, that means, yes, you are (laughs) middle-aged. You need to know what it is because you definitely have somebody in your life uh, that is a loved one that is affected by this. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about coffee today in this journey, how my son cooked his first filet mignon. We'll talk a little bit about how that did or did not fit into my food plan and what happened when a teenager tried to cook filet mignon. How hungry I was during this weight loss journey of week seven, non-weight victories, and the new kitchen gadget I got, a big splurge, that makes almost anything into ice cream. Yeah, we're going to talk about all of that today. Before we dive right in though, if you are listening, if you've been listening on this journey, let me know, reach out to me, send me an email, anything, especially especially if you know me in real life, let me know because like I said on other episodes, I don't necessarily know. I, well, I don't know. I don't know who's listening, um, but I'm super curious and it's always a fun conversation. And um, I get to see numbers of downloads, but not actually who. And sometimes I'm really surprised somebody, you know, way back in my past, I haven't talked to in 20 years will reach out and say, hey, I've listened to all 500 episodes (laughs) and I'm like, cool. (laughs) Also, 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 if you are listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave a five-star review and please take a moment to write a little review. Uh, I realized one of the things that helps get the show out is those reviews that is legit. And to Apple's made it a little bit harder to find it. You have to go to the podcast, scroll down to the bottom, click review. Don't worry if you're not on Apple Podcasts, uh, but if you are and you can, that would be much, much, much appreciated. It'll help uh, spread the word of what we're doing here. Let's do this. Week number seven. So I have now completed seven full weeks of a very focused, targeted tracking weight loss journey designed to not follow any fad at all and to keep my calories in a way and what I eat in a way that's highly nutritious, gives my body what it needs so I can gain strength and speed and energy and just happen to also see the number on the scale go down. So that's what we're doing here. This week, I realized I had made another step in improvement in my fibromyalgia pain in a way that I have felt physically better than I have in a really long time. Uh, Actually, I felt better. My fibromyalgia has felt better than when I first got diagnosed with it. So probably what, four or five years now? Yeah. (laughs) Fibromyalgia manifest differently with different people. It's it's still something that uh, needs to be understood more, but I'll explain what it, it has been for me and how it's manifested for me. Essentially, for decades, I harbored and held on to so much stress rather than working it out, stressing it out, feeling it out, punching a pillow, talking it out. I swallowed it. I swallowed it. Some people swallow their frustrations in life and they grow tumors. Some people swallow their frustrations in life and they take it out on their family. I swallowed it and developed fibromyalgia, which what happened for me was for several years, essentially my nervous system said, Lynn, you're not paying attention to me. So I'm going to up the ante and scream back at you louder and make you pay attention to me. This is essentially what happened. What it felt like 
was I felt like for a couple of years, I felt like I had a fever, but I did not have a fever. You know that fever feeling where it's like your whole body just aches bad and you can feel like your bones ache. You can feel like the marrow in your bones just ache and your joints ache. And when you get up and get moving during the day, everything hurts and it aches. I felt like that for a couple of years. I worked damn hard to recover from it and to get over it. And I changed my food to more of an anti-inflammatory diet. I tried my best to do stress reduction. I tried to do meditation. I tried to keep exercising. I mean, I would kept doing all the things and they were working slowly, slowly, slowly working. But now I've been in a place where I'm uh, living here with just me and my son. And pretty soon I'll be empty nester, like less than a week. I'm going to be an empty nester. Oh my gosh, six days from now. <laughs> My life is way more simple than it's ever been. I'm living in an apartment, don't even own a home right now, which if you guys are homeowners, living in an apartment is actually pretty great in some ways because the amount of responsibility is so much less than a homeowner and the stress is so much less. I just have to put out the stress, you know, I just have to take the stress of the fact that I don't even own a home yet and I'm 50 years old. I've owned five homes in my life, but now I'm like, anyhow, I digress. <laughs> Got to put that all aside. But besides all of that, I, it, my stress level is way less. And where I'm at, there's a hot tub. There's a pool that has a beautiful sun cup area that's peaceful and relaxing. I have been able to take care of my nervous system in a way that I haven't been able to in a long, long time. So I'm seven weeks into eating super duper healthy. I'm seven weeks into never overeating. So I really, ha I've had some higher calorie days, but I haven't done any big overeating days ever. And when you have a big overeating day, that that's that is a stress on the body. It's a lot of work for the body to process all that. If you, you know, do a great big binge, your body's like, oh, what do I got to, I got to do this. I got to work with all this, all this extra food and, and energy. What do I do with it? So I'm seven weeks into not, not overeating, keeping things super simple. I've been hitting the hot tub every single day, sometimes twice a day, <laughs> which makes it it's so fun. <laughs> when I go a second time, I'm like, Ooh, it feels so luxurious. My nervous system is better than ever. Part of what inspired this was, uh, my good friend I talk about, I've got a couple of good friends and one, one of my, well, I got lots of good friends, but you know, one of my dear, dear friends, when I was describing how my fibromyalgia was getting better, she said, yeah, I remember feeling like that a few years ago for a few days. I know what you mean. And it kind of stopped me in my tracks. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is how I have always, this is how I've constantly felt for like five years. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? There's this thing as a calm nervous system, completely calm nervous system. What, what is this thing? I would like to experience it. I started experiencing that for the first time this last week. And that, oh my gosh, that feels so, so good. It's been a long journey. I did have, you know, a couple little things that stressed me out some and I could feel like my whole nervous system start buzzing. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, and I just, you know, pulled out my skills. I'm like, okay, pause, meditate, take a nap if you need to, hit the hot tub, go for a walk, you know, breathe. Um, all those, all those pieces. And another piece of this that I've been real open with too, is I am doing some uh, therapy, specifically somatic therapy, which is really that mind body connection and becoming more aware than ever of how my thoughts actually impact my body and how my body responds to it. So um, other things too, like I haven't had migraines. I haven't had a bad migraine in a long time. A long time. And um, I used to have to cancel classes um, 
what, twice a month, sometimes three times a month, I would have to cancel classes because I'd have a migraine so bad and my migraines are pretty much gone. So that is exciting. So if you are dealing with fibromyalgia also, or if you have somebody who has ever said the word fibromyalgia and said that they have it or they think they have it, lean into that. If a friend of yours says, or your spouse or your significant other talks about that, really lean into it, dive into it because it's super complicated. It's surprisingly debilitating, surprisingly hard to get diagnosed. And, and there's a lot of, um, there's, because there's no lab test, you can't get your blood taken and definitively be told you have fibromyalgia there's a lot of um, skepticism sometimes and um, just judgmental questions that come up by people with it. And a lot of people who have a lot of very unhelpful suggestions of how to heal your fibromyalgia, and that doesn't help. (laughs) When I was at the pit of my fibromyalgia, I had a friend of mine, actually acquaintance, who was like, I knew somebody who had fibromyalgia and they healed it by exercising. You should exercise. And I just wanted to be like, fuck you. (laughs) Excuse me. Okay. So that was pretty exciting to see those um, just things getting better. Another piece of it is my alcohol consumption is almost zero. So I think in seven weeks, I have two or three times had a couple of glasses of wine. Um, Yeah, two or three times. I don't know. If you've listened to the podcast, go back and tell me how much, how much alcohol have I had? (laughs) I've been telling, I've been telling it all to you. That I think has also helped too. And that has been a really tricky catch 22 for me because when my fibromyalgia was its worst, when I was just in pain 24 hours a day, seven days a week, four years, if I had a glass or two of wine, I would actually, it would calm my nervous system down and I would actually feel normal for a few hours. Yeah, slippery slope. I'm fully aware. So I probably had a few years ago, I probably had a good six or eight months where I was drinking seven days a week knowing that alcohol is a neurotoxin and not good for the fibromyalgia, but also knowing that this was the only thing that actually made me feel normal for a period of time. And I knew eating healthy helped. I knew exercise helped. I knew I needed to stretch like all those things, but it was just quite honestly and humbly, it was a relief from the constant pain. And I had tried some other meds and they just, um, they did help a lot and they caused some pretty significant side effects, which is a whole nother podcast. And this is humbling telling you guys all this because I really badly want to just stand up on my own pedestal and say, look at me, I'm amazing. I've got it all figured out. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm figuring things out. But so what's exciting to me here is I'm not doing the alcohol as a coping mechanism for the fibromyalgia. I am getting stronger and I'm feeling that fibro going away and subsiding to a place where I almost kind of forget I have it, which is, oh my gosh, which is just so darn exciting. Another piece of that is coffee. I'm still drinking my coffee. I'm drinking a minimum of two cups a day, usually more like three or four cups of coffee during the day. Black coffee, nothing added to it. I am looking at flirting with reducing that. Our current science on coffee says coffee is good for you in moderation, but I think when I have the three or four cups of coffee in a day, it does cause a little bit of anxiety, a little bit of jittery. And I, I'm just really curious if I reduce my coffee, will it make the fibro even better? I am not excited about reducing my coffee because I love my coffee 
And I've been hanging on to it because I've been letting go of so many other things and changing on <laughs> to so many other things that I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a bear I want to poke. Uh, but that's another thing that's just in the back of my mind. Yeah. Okay. Now, my son going off, going off to school, going off on his life in six days. Last week, I asked him, we were hanging out in the kitchen or living room. In an apartment, it's all kind of the same, right? You know, small space, kitchen, living room, family room. It's all, it's all dining room. It's all kind of one room. <laughs> ah, I was hanging out with him and I really always had a desire to raise a child. And I just happened to have a son raise a, a child who left the house knowing how to cook. Partly because when I went to college, I knew how to make cakes and cookies and biscuits. I knew how to make croissants, like, but I didn't know how to cook rice. I didn't know how to boil eggs. I didn't know how to bake a potato. <laughs> I sure as heck didn't know how to cook chicken. I was like, how did this happen? How did this happen? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to make sure my son uh, didn't have that experience that I had. So he's learned a lot of things. He's actually a pretty darn good cook. And I asked him, I said, is there anything else you want to learn how to cook since, you know, we're here? And he looked at me, he said, I like to learn how to cook steak, mom. Really good. And he knew I, I cook a really mean steak. Like I, I can make a steak as good as any steakhouse. Like if you've been to well, the Met in Seattle, which I guess the Met's gone now, but El Gaucho in Seattle, I can cook a filet mignon as good. Like you could, I could be a chef at El Gaucho. No, I couldn't, <laughs> but I can cook them that well. So I went to my local Costco, bought some filet mignon, which holy cow, it's been so long since I bought filet mignon. That stuff is expensive. <laughs> But I was like, you know what? All right, this is special. We're going to do it. And of course, at Costco, you can't just buy a couple of filet mignon. You have to buy a four pack, you know, minimum. So I bring it home. I teach my son how to cook a filet mignon, which is, and, and I decided filet because it's it's of the meats. It's one of the healthier, leaner cuts, super tender, super lean. It's not as fatty as like a ribeye and some others. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to train him young on a filet mignon, get his palate to be like, that's what I like. And then maybe for a lifetime, he'll be eating less trans fats um, out of the meat, which will be a healthy thing for him. Bring it home, teach him how to cook it. They turned out fabulous, fabulous. And um, oh my gosh, they were so good. And I, I taught him how to do the, the cooking in the kitchen mode. I also want to see if I can get him to learn them on the barbecue. That's my favorite is doing it on the barbecue. But you don't always have access to a barbecue. That's like a whole nother ball game. So I taught him how to do that. A few days later, his dad came and visited and we had two more steaks. And I said, hey, do you want to cook your dad a filet? And he did all by himself. Now I know, I know he's 19, but, and I'm just like the mother, like all by himself. Oh, look at my boy. Cooked the fillets all by like, like I didn't even step in the kitchen hundred percent by himself. And I even talked to him about portion size and how, you know, one fillet cut in half for two, four ounce steaks is actually a four ounce steak is more of a normal size portion size, an eight ounce steak at a steakhouse looks small, but that's technically two portion sizes. So anyhow, he cooked all that up, brought it out. He made them fabulous, fabulous. So how did this fit in my food since I had filet mignon twice last week? <laughs> it fit in great. It is a higher calorie density food, but if you eat a steak slowly, it also has high satiety. So you eat it and by the end of a four ounce steak, which feels like nothing, you see it on the plate and it looks really small, 
like the size of a deck of cards, seriously, the size of a deck of cards, but you take that deck of cards and you cut it in half and put one half on top of the other half so it's nice and thick. So it's just like this little tiny piece of meat. It still completely filled me up, made me feel totally fine, got lots of protein in that I needed. It was um, it was a really great ad. Uh, wouldn't it do it all the time? Quite decadent, but um, still a really great way to get in some protein. So there you go. I might have led you to believe that it was going to be a disaster, but um, no, it's a brag. I get to brag on my son. I was super excited. So uh, that was a fun, that was a really super fun food story that brought like that whole emotional family around the kitchen, pride of what we're doing. It felt really great. And it fit into my healthy diet completely. So those are the kind of food memories, if you can get those, are really super cool because then you can um, have that attachment, that emotional attachment to something that actually fits in your diet that's healthy. And that's super cool. Okay, Tuesday, I really didn't feel very hungry. And that's where that whole intuitive eating thing works. So I didn't eat as much on Tuesday. Same thing kind of happened on Wednesday. Thursday was kind of exciting because Thursday is when I got, Thursday night is when I got a brand new kitchen gadget that I'm trying out. The jury's out. I am not recommending it yet, but I'm just giving it a try. It's called the Ninja Creamy. Okay. I learned about this thing surfing the internet. I learned about this thing surfing short videos and it, okay, let me just tell you about what it is. And then, um, I've just barely got started on it, but essentially it's this machine that takes a pint size jar and it's kind of like a blender, but it's not. And it's specifically designed to mix things in this pint size jar so that they are creamy like ice cream. Yeah. And I, I love me some ice cream. In fact, when I worked with my nutritionist a few years ago, she realized ice cream was kind of my nemesis. And so she'd be like, try this coconut ice cream. And I would try it. Try this non-dairy ice cream. Try this keto ice cream. I'm like, no, gross. (laughs) So I thought, you know what? I, I am very much a minimalist in my kitchen. I don't have many kitchen gadgets. I don't even own a toaster. There's some weird things I don't own because I just like a simple uncluttered kitchen. But I was like, oh, but ice cream, but ice cream, I'm going to try this. And what sold me was I saw a bunch of people using this ice cream thing to essentially turn their morning protein shake into a frozen ice cream treat. So you basically take your protein shake, what you normally would eat, put it in this machine in a pint, take that whole frozen solid block of protein shake, spin it up. And now you have this, like, it feels like you're eating literally an entire pint of ice cream um, for breakfast, which I was like, I can do that. Yeah. (laughs) I could totally sit down and feel like I'm eating a pint of ice cream for breakfast. So we got that. The jury is out. I tried a couple of recipes, but I need to get in some, just play with the ingredients because I, there's a whole bunch of crap recipes for this one with all kinds of artificial sweeteners, all kinds of junk they put in, gar gum, xanthan gum, all kinds of things. And I'm trying to dial in recipes that I actually love and enjoy that don't lean on those additives. Uh, So I just got it on Thursday. I've only tried it once. Um, I think it's got great potential. And the idea, the concept of feeling like I'm eating ice cream for breakfast when it's actually my protein smoothie shake sounds pretty awesome. So I'll let you know how that goes in an upcoming week. My mind is still asking myself the question, is this really about a number on the scale for me? Or is it really truly about my other non-weight victories, speed, strength, energy? And I think I have to humbly 
really just completely own it and admit that it's a bit of both. It's a, it's really a bit of both of me. It's the speed and strength energy, and it's a little bit of get Lynn skinny or skin, you know? Um, and I even, yeah, see, I even hate saying those words. It just sounds vain, but it's, it's not vain. It's, it's getting this extra fat I have on my stomach off and I don't know. I feel like I've just got so deep steeped into the body positive movement, which is a super amazing, powerful movement that I I don't want to dismiss the great work they're doing. And I don't want to dismiss the fact that our culture does a terrible job of helping us love ourselves for who we are and where we are. So it's, I think my brain just goes right, right down into complicated really quickly. Uh, but n- I do have some definite, definite non-weight victories I can see right now. Um, my quads, my calves, uh, my legs, basically, and my deltoids, my shoulders, I can feel the muscles underneath that skin more than I have been able to in a really long time. And an interesting thing is my face is looking slimmer, not as puffy. And I have to attribute that to more than just a number on the scale. I think it's also managing stress and proactively taking that radical care of myself, just really making sure I eat well, sleep, hydrate, like it's all of it. I know a lot of times we wonder, is it the weight loss? Is it the water? Is it the fact that I'm, you know, going to the hot tub every day and de-stressing? No, no, no. It's all of it. It's all of it. And so I think when my mind gets stuck and spinning on that question, is it really a scale goal versus, you know, a health and fitness goal? I have to give myself some compassion here and just really do the journey and not worry so much about putting a moral, good, bad, evil, right, wrong stamp on it and just live life. And I think you guys, you, you do that too, right? You, you can do that too. Is sometimes you just do what you want to do and don't, don't really worry about way detail psychoanalyzing every little bit of it. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at what the facts were, the data of this week, calories, protein, fat, fiber, and starting weight, ending weight. Calories surprised me. I came in, my goal is around 13, 1400 calories a day average. I came in at 1210. That was actually lower than I thought. And that is actually too low. I really need to keep it 13, 1400. Um, so next week I am going to take those calories up a little bit more, regardless of what the scale says. Can't get it too low here. But interesting, I just wasn't that hungry that week, this week. Protein, bare minimum, my goal was 80, bare minimum, up to 125. I averaged 98, so that's awesome. Fat, bare minimum was 30 with a goal of up to 50, and I got 14, I mean 48 grams of fat a day. Um, And fiber, my goal was around 15 bare minimum to 20. And I got 12. My fiber was low. So I'm asking myself the question, this one week, my fiber was low, yet my hunger was lower than ever, but my protein was good. My fat was good. So I'm going to, I'm going to just keep a look at that. It's only one week of data, but, um, I was just surprised at how low my fiber was and that I wasn't hungry all the time because fiber has been a big piece of helping me. So with that said, you would hope there would be a weight loss because those calories were so low. (laughs) Starting weight of the week, 169 pounds. Ending weight, 166.6. Total net loss for the week, 2.5 four pounds for grand total loss since I started this journey about, what was this, seven weeks ago of 15.4 pounds. I am feeling like this is a little too fast, but it's weird. Day to day, it doesn't feel too fast. Week to week, I don't hardly notice a difference in myself except energy and things are, you know, getting better. Um, but then I, these numbers, this tracking is so good because I look at it and I'm like, 
wait, I'm averaging two pounds a week over like seven weeks in 15 pounds. That's two pounds a week. Um, yeah. How fascinating. (laughs) (laughs) So next week, what am I going to do next week? I am going to make sure that I don't have another 1200 calorie week because that's just going to a day week that's going to set me up for a crash. And I do not want that. Um, I'm excited about the progress. And now it seems like my body is fully adapted to looking to itself and its fat stores for extra energy reserves And it seems like my hormones, I haven't gotten my hormones tested, but my hunger cues are really pretty spot on. So now I just need to make sure I eat enough, which is, (laughs) I guess that's a great place to be, I guess. (laughs) So uh, yeah, that's awesome. Next week, what's going on for me next week? I have my crazy town is starting to come up. I've got a quick trip with my son to visit a university. Um, and followed by his graduation. Yes. So it's kind of a big week next week. I'm asking myself, is that going to derail anything? And I'm coming into it with a kind of a cocky sense of confidence this upcoming week, partly because I'm just traveling with my son and it's way more easy (laughs) for me to control things when it's me and my son, than it would be like me and friend or something. I also have a couple of trips coming up after this where I actually want to do some pub dining. I want to get some French fries. I think I do. (laughs) I want to have my beer. I want to have that dessert, things like that. And so I'm getting my head around, you know, what, how do I do this in a way that's completely sustainable? How do I do it in a way where I really enjoy my weekend and I don't become one of those health nuts who just forgets about enjoying life because they're being a health nut. So (laughs) my head is starting to think about that because those are coming up in the following weeks. So there you have it. 15 mile marker. That's mile. (laughs) 15 pound marker. 15.4. Pretty exciting. Alrighty. If you are thinking you would like help doing a similar journey, head on over to couch2active.com. Reach out to me. We can work through what are your specific macros, what are your specific calorie needs for where you are, for the goals you're at, get you to your week zero, get you up and rolling. We can accomplish a lot pretty quickly together. Uh, So head on over there and sign up for my best self, my best self. And we'll start getting you rocking and rolling. That's couchtoactive.com. <laughs>